Sammy, did she warm up your Finnish bone? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bones. <laughs> The Sunday before the Eurovision final, the Eurovision 2015 stars turned it out on the red carpet and we were there with our cameras and our microphones to get their comments on what they were wearing, who they were wearing, and how they were feeling. We've run a poll on Weebie Blogs for who worked the red carpet best and we can now review, review the winners and losers. Now before we get there, Porig, can you explain how we determined these results? Um, obviously there were 6,387 total votes, but but the scoring was a bit more complicated than that. We had the poll as normal, so we were able to rank everyone on that, so we ranked from best to worst. But then we factored in the thumbs up and thumbs down, which we'd included for the first time. So everyone had a thumbs up or thumbs down between their photo. And then based on the amount of um, positive thumbs up, we ranked them from 1 to 40 as well. And so then once we combined them all together, we had a result and we were able to tell who was the best and who was the worst. So in short, our readers were gagging on the eleganza and at times they were vomiting on the eleganza and you cleaned it up and picked a winner and here we go. In first place, it was Albania's El Haida Dani wearing this gorgeous yellow wedding cake. I just love how it cinches at the waist, you've got the flowers and you've got that beautiful bodice train. I don't know how to describe it. The bell at the bottom. Denise, are you feeling it? Um, not as much as you do. <laughs> no. Um, well, I like the fact that um, she wore a big dress. She was like, oh, there's a red carpet. I'm going to dress like I'm on the red carpet instead of some others who thought it was the uh, picnic in the park or something. But um, so I like the fact that she did that. Um, but the dress itself, it, it was just... I don't know, a little too much. The skirt was too big. Um, the top, it's... It, I, yeah, how do I explain this? I don't know, it's just... It's just the color, the color itself. I didn't like it. Um, and there was no glitter or no, no shiny things or something. It was just too simple, but also over the top. Um, and this is a really bad explanation, I know, <laughs> but it's really hard to explain. Um, but no, I'm just not feeling it. <laughs> I thought it was really nice because it brought some Hollywood glamour to the red carpet. Because like Denise was saying, some people just looked like they were rocking up to the club. And she had this big the yellow gown flowed out and then she had these kind of patterns kind of sewn into her top as well. And she just looked very much nearly like a film star, maybe not an A-list film star, but you would mistake her for a film star if you were a random Viennese citizen walking around Vienna and bumped into her. You'd think, oh, who's this superstar? So I think it was a nice dress and very appropriate for the red carpet. <laughs> Sammy, did she warm up your Finnish bones? Or your bone? Um, she really brought the sun to the red carpet. It was really nice. Um, and yeah, like Dennis and Boric said it was some nice that some took some effort putting something special on the red carpet compared to someone like Austria or something. Um, but I don't think it was the best one, no. It was like, it was okay, but not the best one. Well, our readers certainly liked it, giving it 1,345 thumbs up and only 431 thumbs down. Now, in the second place, this is actually my personal winner. It is Adurne from Spain. She was rocking this black and white cheetah print Jose Fuentes gown, and her ratio is real, real good. As you can see, she had 1,043 thumbs up and only 312 thumbs down. She had these strawberry golden locks. She had a neck piece kind of dangling just above her cleavage, leading you down to where you want to go. She was giving us major hip action. It was fitted. The breast cups kind of seashell cheetah. I'm loving it. I'm living it. Denise. I want to have it. <laughs> yeah, it's also my favorite. Uh, it looks amazing and it was perfect for her body. And <clears throat> like you said, also the hair, the makeup. I mean, in general, it looked so, so good. And also for the red carpet, this is what I want to see on the red carpet. It's like um, she did put some effort in it. It is over the top, but in a good way. And there are some glitters and I love glitters. So this was perfect. Yeah. 
Well, it also helps that the person wearing the dress was the Derni, because a Derni could probably have walked up in like a garbage bag and still have gotten loads of votes because she'd have looked glamorous and anything. Um, it definitely is a red carpet dress. Um, the cheetah print maybe is a bit over the top. Because when you think of cheetah print and leopard print, you kind of think cheap boudoir, pimpy kind of 80s tackiness or something. I don't know. But um, she looked very glamorous. She really did. Um, I like this much more than El Haida's dress. And Edurne is so beautiful. And it's, there's something more than in El Haida's dress. El Haida's dress was a little boring maybe, but like th there's there's the um, print and there's the necklace and it's just perfect. I think she broke the red carpet best. Yeah, one could say Albania's dress was yellow curtains wrapped around a body, whereas this was expensive fabric with glitters and jewels wrapped around a goddess. Loving it. In third place, we have Georgia's Nina Sablati. She was given as fierce vampire androgyny. Hey, looking at her ratio, she has 1,290 thumbs up to 624 thumbs down. I like how this is very elegant vampire diaries. Denise. Yes, it's Nina. And uh, when it comes to Nina, it looks great, but it isn't something I want in my closet. So it's perfect for her, and if you look at it and hear the song Warrior while she's walking down the red carpet, it's the whole package is really, really good, and it's something different. And I think um, she's really showing also the warrior with this, and it's so... Um, I don't know the right word for it. It's like a feminist or something. Like, oh, I can also wear this. I'm a woman. I'm I'm a tough lady, and I can also do this. And so it looks really good. Maybe it's it isn't something I want to wear, but for Nina, it, it looks really good. Yes. I think Nina's done so well in our poll purely on the basis of her being Nina, because why <laughs> she looks great in the suit, you kind of have to think about where she's wearing it like if she rocked up in the office wearing that she'd turn heads and everybody be like oh she's so chic oh look at her wearing her office suit it's so brilliant and she looks like uber powerful and she's gonna close some major business deal but then walking down the red carpet you're like why is she wearing that this is a red carpet she's just here in like a power suit um why because but, she's a rebel a feminist with a cause <laughs> But like, see, she a rebel is somebody who goes out and does something on her own. But then who troops up down the carpet also wearing an androgynous look? Monica from Lithuania. Oh. So like, <laughs> so, so like, she that wasn't was worried about it. Sammy. I think Monica wrote this look much better. I like Monica <laughs> much more than Nina. <laughs> the whole torture and delication looks so boring and they're already wearing black and it's like, uh, no, thank you. I don't know how, why Nina is so high on that. Pole. Black is the new pink. Black is a statement. It is simplicity. It gives you otherworldly outer space intergalactic realness. She is serving you darkness, which is the conflagration of all colors. Yes! I thought Monica looked cheap. She looked just, it was like she borrowed it from Vitus. It was like, hey, yeah. I ain't got no clothes. Can I borrow one of your tuxes? Yeah, Nina's was better, as in Nina's looked like it was actually made to fit her and was designed for a woman, whereas Monica's just looked like somebody took in one of Vitus's suits and she wore it. But neither of them were red carpet glamour. Well, speaking of glamour, we turn to fourth <coughs> place, and this is Norway's Deborah Scarlet. You guys, on stage, she rocked a white, pure look. Here, she is wa working a dark black look. I love that it shows her contrast. She can do good, evil, light, dark, bitch, angel. It's fantastic. The red hair is on fire. The beautiful neck piece, that must weigh her down. I bet her back hurts. This was flawless. She really stayed true to her edgy, edgy realness. Denise. Yes, it looked so good. And <clears throat> I was also a big fan of her dress in the semifinals. And um, even though a lot of people hated it, and I absolutely adored it. And also this, it's so chic and elegant and her hair is making it even more perfect and it looks so good and 
Uh, he stands there like, okay, this is my girl, she's here, and she can steal the show, and I just put on my black suit, I'm not here, it's all about her, and it was all about her, and he also looked good, but she she looked amazing. Yeah, she looked nearly like, I don't know, like a 1920s film star, just the whole dress, and you kind of wondered nearly why she wore that dress on the red carpet and didn't keep it for the stage, because I think it would have been a much better dress for her to wear instead of that white mess that um, she had on in Eurovision. <laughs> because she looked really glamorous and it matched the kind of feel and image from the music video where mm-hmm. they're having the big food fight. Um, but she definitely outshone Moreland because Moreland nearly just looks like, do you know like there's a edgy teenager who wants to look cool when he's going to a wedding or something? So he'll just wear black suit, black shirt, black tie, which... I don't know, for a man of Moreland's age, it seems a bit childish, but um, she was definitely the star of that duo. Everywhere they went, they looked stunning together. Of course, Deborah stole the show um, in the red carpet, but they looked good as a couple. And speaking of the couple, I hope they continue working together after the year recent because they, they really look good. Um, I don't know if Deborah was the best dresser in the red carpet. Moreland wasn't from the best from the men, but they, they looked good together and I kind of understand why they're so high. And you know what guys, Deborah Scarlett's real name is Joanna Deborah Bussinger. That is pedestrian, but you know what? She is high fashion and this dress, it screams Deborah Scarlett, not Joanna Deborah Bussinger. Now, in fifth place, the only male making our top five, it's Eurovision 2015 winner Mons Zomalove, and y'all are loving his blue suit. He told us on the red carpet this took him just a few minutes to pick, but you know what? He's got good instincts because it fits him so well. It exposes his chest, that manliness, that hair creeping over. He's not afraid to own it, to show who he is and what he's got. I was loving this. I think the blue softness really fits him because yes, he's a man, but he is soft and he is sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Mons. And what you said with Edorne, um, that also counts for Mons. He can wear anything and still looks good. Um, about this suit, it's it's a better version than um, Vida's his suit um, on stage, also the blue color, but this is more mature or something, so it really suits him, but I would have preferred the old-fashioned black suits. No, I think the color adds a lot, because I think the red carpet a lot of time can be really dull when you're looking at the men, that the women come out in all these fantastic dresses full of color, and then the man just comes and sticks on a tux. And just walks down in black and white. So Mons at least showed a bit of um, innovation almost to go and wear the blue suit. And like he looked really, really good in it. And I think it's a toss up between him and maybe Stig from Estonia for best dressed man on the red carpet, in my opinion. But um, he was definitely miles ahead of, say, Moreland, who we just talked about. Yeah, it would be so boring if everyone would wear this um, black suit. I don't know if it's like the best what Mons have ever wore, but it, it is a good one. Um, and like you said, he looks good always, so whatever he's wearing, he looks good. Um, I don't think it's the best um, man in the whole red carpet. There's one better one, but it was a good one, yeah. I would have really loved to see Mons just appear on the red carpet in a pair of socks. I think it would really have shown himself to all of us, let us get to know him. Now, final question. I want to go through, putting the results aside, and everyone just choose one other artist we haven't featured who you think deserves attention. And I'm going to kick it off with Bojana Staminov from Serbia. She was given us theatrical glamour. This was not, this is not a dress that you would wear on the street. <laughs> this is not a dress you would wear to McDonald's, to the mall. You wouldn't even wear it to a fancy party. This is a red carpet look. She's got this beautiful red feather boa, sequins, this amazing chiffon kind of translucent dress with like flowers underneath. This is hilarious. You know, she was really working every inch of her curves in a very high fashion way. And you know, she proves that you don't have to be a stick figure to make an impact on the red carpet, this to me is the most memorable look. She really owned it. Well done, Boyana. <laughs> um, for me, it is Loic. Um, he is really young and so talented. And if you look at the staging, it was all in black and white. 
and the suit he wore was not the typical black suit but with the white elements in it it was something different and something more artistic and um, as far as we know it's typical the week so I think for a 19 year old guy he did a really great job choosing this because well he makes every decision so I also think he um, picked this out by himself and it looked really good on him. He looked a little older with it. So, great job, Loic. <laughs> um, I'm going to cheat and pick two. So oh, I, You fashion but, whore. And, and technically, it's four because it's two duos. So, it's Estonia's Stig and Alina. And Alina looked really glamorous. She had this kind of all black gown. And then Stig had a blue suit. And then he had the pink runners underneath. And... Um, that really like just nearly a cheeky little fashion statement from him. And then my second one was San Marino's Mikel Preniola and Anita Simoncini. And I think that from for their age, it's difficult to choose something that works, that they don't appear too grown up or too sexualized or whatever when they're 16. And I think they pulled it off really well compared to like Ireland's Molly, who just looked like she was coming to the club or something or like dressed on Friday or whatever. Whereas the two of these, Anita had this really glamorous kind of um, sparkly top with a, I don't know, a skirt thing. And then um, Mikhail had a, a, like a really good suit and it was age appropriate and they both looked really well. Um, seems that the, our readers don't agree with me because they have more thumbs down than thumbs up. But my favorite was Maria from Slovenia. Um, they have their own style. They look amazing. Uh, Marietka's dress is Maybe it would be good for someone else, but Marietta has her own style and it was perfect. And Ray looks so good in the suit. Well, it's not really suit. It's like, it's something else. And of course, the headphones, they are, they, they are their brand. So it's good that they had them in the red carpet also. And they were my favorite from the whole 14. Definitely original. I feel like Ray is giving us some kind of like Harry Potter villain high fashion realness. It's just when you look at this, the boots, the tie, the... something about it doesn't work and yet it does. So more power to him.